my name is Angela Stott and I am involved in the Social Responsibilities Project at the South Campus. And my role there is um, partly as a researcher, both doing my own research, publishing articles, and also helping uh, supervise postgraduate students. And then also working with learners and teachers in the townships, uh, both as for short learning programs and then also mentoring and running interventions to help improve science education. What are your main research interests? Well, science education, as I just said, yes. Um, and basically anything with science education, but more specifically, deep learning and critical thinking. While I was, I, I started off as a school teacher and did my um, my master's and my PhD while teaching. And during that time I studied my practice and I was particularly interested in, um, in deep learning and higher achievement, gifted education and um, sort of extension. But then I moved from there to teacher education and that caused me also to shift my focus more to particularly um, poverty, contexts of poverty, and science education within contexts of poverty, because of course that is the main problem in South African education in general and also science education, which is my research interest. And then another subdivision within that that I'm very interested in and have done a lot of work in is use of ICT to improve science education. And then another area is inquiry that fits a bit more with the critical thinking, which I've already referred to. And then also reading, particularly reading within the context of science. How do you normally publish your research outputs? Uh, well, there are two main avenues. One is conference proceedings. And then uh, the other is obviously journal articles, which is the main, the main one. Oh, well, the third one is also books, book chapters. So I've got in each of those three categories, I've got publications. And the most common one, the one that I have the most publications for is in journal articles. And obviously there you can go <laughs> international or national. So one has to look at all of those options, which of those um, categories is the best for the particular topic that you're researching. What does open access mean to you? Well, I hope I do have the right understanding of it uh, as according to what, what you understand, right? But my understanding is that the journal or whatever publication, might be a, a book, um, is you don't have to pay for it. So it might be a, an online book. In my understanding, it's either an online journal article or an online book chapter where an, a user doesn't need to pay either through their university or, or you know, at all. It's just free. <laughs> so in that way, it's okay. open access. Um, and why do you think is open access so important to you? Well, because that is going to increase your citation rate, because obviously if anyone can just access it, then they're more likely to use it. Because I know for myself, well, on one hand, when I, I like to just use Google Scholar and just search for stuff, and obviously the free stuff is what comes up first. On the other hand, anyway, I have access to a lot of stuff that is not open access through, through the university. So in that way, that reduces that issue, but I would suppose that if it's if it's free, you know, people are probably more likely to cite it. Can you think of some benefits of, of open access publishing? Well, um, obviously, to the un uh, the the user that they don't have to pay for it, and to me as the researcher that hopefully it's going to cause more citations. Um, often, open access journals do not have an impact factor or does not appear on an accredited list. Does this influence your decision on where to publish? I'm definitely never going to publish 
an academic article in one that doesn't uh, fall on an accredited list because, mm. you know, one of the reasons for maybe the main reason why I'm doing research is that I need to develop, a, you know, an academic profile and I need to bring in funding to the university. And that doesn't happen when it's not an accredited list. It, it takes far too long to do a journal, to write a journal article, uh, not to throw that away. So there's absolutely no way I'm going to do that. The impact factor is a less of a problem to me. Well, I think that there are also stages you go through within your academic career. Uh, and in the early stages, you're just very glad to get published at all. <laughs> and then later you get a bit more picky. And I'm, I think, in between those two stages or the, you know, obviously it's a grade, but I'm not yet very picky, but I'm starting to get picky. So up till now, I haven't worried, well, up till maybe like last year, I haven't really worried about impact factor. But now I'm starting to become a bit more picky and starting to look at that as well. So that that could have an influence, but the main thing is definitely not one that's not on the list. So what advice would you give colleagues in relation to open access publishing? Well, I, I, I don't know if I'm really in a position because, like I said, you know, you, you change your focus. And just as with the impact factor, you know, I haven't been very picky, but now I'm starting to be a bit more picky. Up till now, I haven't really so much uh, worried about whether it's open access or not. I, I just want to see, well, there are other criteria that are more that have been more important to me. But that said... I currently have a paper in a very good open access, well, submitted to a very good open access international journal. It's open access because it's funded by the, I'll probably get it wrong, something like the Royal Chemistry Association. So, so that's why they can be open access, if my understanding of open access is right. In other words, that's why it's free. Um, and and one of the reasons why I targeted that is because it is a very cited journal, probably because of it being open access. Not That's not the only reason. It's also just a very good journal. So in that way, then I am now becoming a bit more aware of that and deciding, OK, maybe that's something to think about. OK, another another thing this year uh, that has also influenced my view of open access which I maybe should have mentioned for a previous question, I don't know, but I just think of it now. Because earlier in the year, I also submitted another paper to an open access journal in South Africa, very good South African, well, African journal. And it's open access, not because it's funded by some kind of organization, but rather because you have to pay an enormous fee. It's enormous, enormous publication fee. And so I had not been aware of this because I've never experienced that that scale of fee before. <laughs> and so I happily went through the process just thinking it's going to be reasonable, reasonable page fees because obviously some things, I mean, it's really nice. Some journals, you don't even pay any page fees. And some of those are even open access, like the one – that I referred to earlier that's from the international because it's funded by that society. Um, but, you know, you do understand that you're probably going to have to pay a small page fee. But when I saw how much it is in this South African open access journal, I got an absolute shock. And so then I first of all thought, well, wait, I don't know then if I do want to publish there. But there are a lot of Benefits, which I've referred to before, you know that it's uh, it's also a very good journal and it's the go-to journal. It's actually in maths education and everyone in maths education always cites it. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, that it's really the right journal for it. But now there's this awful page fee. And so how do we make the decision from that? And, and then... 
I eventually decided to try it, even though there's that high page fee because the benefits were, you know, seemed to outweigh that. But, you know, those are issues that you, you have to think about. But one tends in this progression through your career, maybe to only, you know, I, I wouldn't earlier in my career even have considered going there because I, where am I going to get that money? Now I have a research fund, so I could dip into that. And the benefit to my career is worth it. But earlier in your career, you don't have that luxury. So I would have not been influenced. Um, I mean, I would have been very influenced by that that's, that heavy page fee. So I think that um, it depends. So say actually the question I'm meant to be answering, but I'm kind of going off the topic, is what advice did you, you give? I think that your view on what to uh, whether to use open access or not is affected by many factors and one of them is the position within your career and therefore how picky you can be and therefore what other and also what other factors play a role in your decisions of which journal is appropriate to you do you see open access becoming a bigger feature of the publishing landscape in your research field I don't know enough about it to be able to say, yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know. I've become more aware of it late, lately simply because now I am more picky, whereas earlier I went with journals that I knew and that that more influenced my decision, whereas now my decisions are more influenced by what is going to improve my standing as a researcher. And so then I've become aware, more aware of the different categories. So I'm only just starting that journey. My name is Joyce Tukakukweni. I'm the Vice Dean for Research in the Faculty of Health Sciences. But Wolf, we know that you publish quite a lot. So what are your uh, main research interests? My main research interests are public health, health systems policy, maternal and child health, epidemiology, and prevention of communicable diseases in particular malaria, HIV, T, TB, and infections. But I'm also interested in vulnerable populations and health research ethics. What I also often see from your publications when I, when I track you is that you collaborate a lot with um, international, with other people that's, that's researchers that's not in South Africa. Do you find that um, difficult in these times or Oh, how would you, in any case, communicate or collaborate with those um, co-researchers? Well, do you also just work electronically with them? We just communicate electronically. I, I think during these times, we must really thank the technology for coming to our rescue. So, Prof, where, um, how do you normally publish your research outputs? Normally, I publish them in journals as you may have noticed in open access journals. Yeah, so, so you've mentioned open access now. So what does, what does open access mean to you? In short, to me, it just means free and quick access to information. I would, yeah, maybe I should just say that to me as a researcher and as someone who's regularly searching for information. For the reader and the public, and the author really is the as as a author. Because for you to write a, a, a paper, you need information that you can, you can look at and see what is in there to reference. And for the other person who's needing that information to make decisions as well. So it, is, it helps both. It's, yeah, the yeah. rapid availability of information and the fact that it's freely accessible. Yeah, so, so um, what is your perception of the benefits of open access publishing? You've just touched now on, on that it's freely available and, and, and so on, but are there any other benefits of open access publishing that you can think of? 
Yeah, as I, I, I mentioned to, yeah, both, I have four here, including the ones I've mentioned that the speed of publication in health sciences, things change fast, technology policies, treatments and interventions. Therefore, it is critical that we have access to timely information. Then secondly, as well, the wide distribution of information means it is accessible to the world out there and other researchers. And also it means in turn, the information is available to other publishers and researchers, you know. So the, the wide distribution is one of the benefits. And the other benefit is it promotes visibility. People who didn't know about me, now they know because they can access my information and uh, not just in South Africa, in the world, they will, they will realize me, they recognize me and it improves my readership and citations as well. So that's another benefit. And the, the fourth one is the fact that um, it promotes my work, the impact of my work, you know, while I'm contributing to knowledge, my research is also concerned with public health and therefore people who access my work are able to, uh, to timelessly apply the knowledge that I've shared with them and to make rapid decisions, whether to improve lives of people and society through policies, methods, guidelines, or other things. And for which we're just talking now about the COVID-19, take the case of COVID-19 pandemic. We need information rapidly. We needed information rapidly. We couldn't wait for two to three years to fight this uh, pandemic. We needed information rapidly so that we can fight it. And yeah, guess what? The information is available there through open access. Yes, and, and I agree with you. It, it's, it's something that people want to know about now. Even, even in the library, we want to know what is the evidence of the virus living on books because we want to open the library. Exactly. It, it impacts every sector of life. Yeah. Exactly. And we can't wait and say, yeah, we need the information. And we need to we, know, must we quarantine our, our books and for how long must we quarantine the books and so on. So, so then it's fantastic if you get, if you get, I, I came across a systematic review on, on, on specifically this, the transmission of COVID and how long it lives on surfaces. And that's exactly what we read, need right now. And that's an open access article. So, so I was really happy about that. But Prof, mm, the, the other see. thing you touched on, you said that it improves your uh, visibility with other researchers, um, because that's one of the criticism uh, towards open access journals is that they sometimes don't have an impact factor or they're not on the accredited journalist yet. And does that influence uh, your decision on where to publish? Uh, to some extent, not so much. Sometimes it's because in South Africa, the research outputs are linked to incentives and they are regarded as a source of income. So if you don't publish in the accredited list, it means you may not get the, the incentive or subsidy that goes with it. Yeah. But it doesn't influence me, as you notice, mostly my publications are still in open access. So I really... I don't focus on that much because for me, it has promoted me as a scientist. Um, we see that also with the undergrad medical students. Sometimes they, 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 um, their research projects are so good they want to publish, but now you have to decide, is it better to publish or is it better to publish if they can get accreditation and, and get that money? But but. I think for a young researcher like them, it's better to just get the article out there and get and get published so they can work on their careers late, later on. So I'm glad you said that, that it's about your visibility as researcher and that it's not always the main concern is that you get the subsidy. 
Yes. Uh, yes. I also wanted to add to what you said about students because I use open access to assist my students as they develop as young scientists because they, they have to, to start making, to publish. Yes. So, yeah, to develop as scientists. So open access has really helped them and me as well as, as their mentor. Um, so, so what advice do you give those students and other colleagues um, in relation to open, open access publishing? I would really, yeah, advise them to consider publishing in open access. I know there are challenges, some say it's related to page fees and the incentives, but the world is changing rapidly and access to timely information is needed. And for you to, to be as well, to be visible as a scientist, it will really help promote you, your career rapidly. So um, Prof, do you see open access becoming a bigger feature of the publishing landscape in your research field? In my field, it has already be, yeah, it has already become a bigger feature, if not the biggest as we speak. I mean, I just gave you the example of information about COVID. And if we, it wasn't for the open access journals, I mean, uh, there are already numerous articles that are freely available that were published in 2020 only on, about COVID-19. So it is a bigger feature. If it's not the biggest, yeah, it is. Yeah, Prof, I agree with you. And the other thing I, because I usually come from the side of the, uh, what you call the bibliometrics, measuring the research output. Now, now it's such a, I don't want to say Eurocentric, but let's not call it Eurocentric. It's such a Eurocentric notion to publish in a journal with a high impact factor. I, is it, is it? I've, is it not for you as a researcher, is it not better as a researcher to publish and to publish that's contextual? In other words, that's about um, Africa and South Africa and, and not try to write articles to be published in the impact factor journal. So I often think that the publishing landscape must change because we can't just keep on going with high impact factor journals. We need to look at what is the use of your research in your in your specific environment. Yes, yeah, it's true. As I said, in public health, really in, in impact factors don't matter because when you do research, what is more um, relevant is also your context and the social value of research. You cannot, because you are, you are doing research with people, people's yeah. lives. Prof. Marika Labaskagni is a professor at plant breeding in the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of the Free State. She is currently the chair of the South African Research Chairs Initiative known as SACHI in disease resistance and quality in field crops. She has been involved in the training of especially PhD students from all over Africa for the last 20 years. Prof. Labaskagni and her students have authored 206 scientific papers in mainly ISI listed journals. She has co-authored or authored 96 papers at national and 89 papers at international conferences. She has received numerous awards such as the Continental Lifetime Achiever Award of Africa's Most Influential Woman in Business and Government in 2015 and the African Union Kwame Nkrumah Award for Life and Earth Sciences for the Continent in January 2012. So without further ado, further ado, let's speak to Prof. Labas Kachni. Prof, I've already mentioned a bit about you, but what can you tell us about yourself? Okay, um, I've been at the university for more than 30 years now, and um, I my, my main research focus is on nutritional value of crops, especially, especially uh, staple crops in Africa. So as you've heard, uh, I have the Sachi chair, and our part of the research is to look at a genetic improvement of nutritional quality, of nutritional value and quality of staple crab crops in Africa. 
So um, we have numerous PhD students working on this project all over Africa. And, um, and we try to release new cultivars also that have better nutritional value and better quality all over Africa. So that is the main focus uh, and, and what I keep myself busy with. How do you normally publish your research outputs? Um, we only publish in ISI listed journals as far as possible with, with very, very few exceptions. So we also do not publish in journals that do not have an impact. So we try to publish in as high as possible impact within our field. And if possible, we also try to publish open access. A quick search on the Web of Science revealed the following to me. Between 1989 to 2013, it picked up 159 publications, which was cited the total number of times of 1,693. Your age index is 22, and between the period of 2012 to 27, 16 of those articles were in open access journals. Saying that, what does open access mean to you, Prof.? Well, I think every researcher would love to publish everything open access because it makes your accessibility and your citations of your papers much higher. Um, so, so that would be the ideal. But obviously, it's quite costly usually, especially the very good journals are very expensive. So, um, so we try as far as possible to, to publish open access. The question, why is open access important to you? Um, I think it just, in, in the first place, you have far more journals that you can actually publish in. For example, uh, in our field uh, of plant sciences, for example, you have the Frontiers journals, which are all open access and which have a very high impact, one of the highest impacts in our fields. And that journal is only open access. So, so you have a far larger choice of journals that you can publish in. And then, as I say, definitely the papers are cited more if they are open access because everyone has free access to your research. So it really helps to push up your citations and in the end, it influences your age index as well. Okay. And then, often open access journals do not have an impact factor or does not appear on an accredited list. Does this influence your decision where to publish? Yes, certainly. If we go open access, we try for only the very, very highest because you have to pay for it. So we would never publish in a um, non-ISI uh, non listed open access journal. Um, you know, then you can rather publish in a, in a just a, a, a journal that you don't have to pay for. What advice from your side would you give your colleagues in relation to open access publishing? Well. As I said, I think the ideal is to publish open access as far as possible, but obviously most researchers have a restriction in terms of funding. But I would really suggest that you put some funding aside every year to publish one or two papers open access. And what we do, um, our collaborators in the projects that we do often carry the cost. For example, we have many students um, who are funded by Bill and Melinda Gates, and they carry all the costs for open access publishing. So try and get external partners who can help you fund your open access publishing. Prof. Abdan Ghana one day told us at a research or an open access week that it also helps if you co-author. Yeah, it depends on how many, yeah, it depends on who you work with, you know, if people are willing to help cover, because what we also sometimes do is that we split the cost between co-authors. So that would also help a lot to help you publish open access. Okay, and then just a final question. Do you see open access becoming a bigger feature of the publishing landscape in your research field? Yes, I think so. I'm on the, I'm on the editorial board, for example, of one of the Frontiers journals. And, um, in the meetings, they state that absolutely that will be the future, is that everyone publishes open access. But I think in, in the African landscape, that may not be possible because it's very costly. Prof, I want to thank you for your time and your words of wisdom. And I want to wish you the best with your publishing going forward. My name is Lynette Jacobs and I'm a researcher on the South Campus for Open Distance Learning. 
Now, can I ask you, what are your main research interests? Leanda, firstly, I focus on the behavior of role players in education settings and how it may, may hinder meaningful teaching and learning. Linked with this broad theme, I work on negative learner behavior and various kinds of bullying, including learner on teacher bullying, learner on learner bullying, and workplace bullying of teachers. Secondly, I focus on access to and inclusion in education opportunities at different levels, including higher education. One such an example was a participatory study on how, mo how mo mobile libraries could, it could enhance the education opportunities of learners in rural schools. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Um, now, can you tell me, how do you normally publish your research outputs? I would normally look for a journal in which the academic discourse on the topic of the article is taking place. It's no use publishing in a journal where nobody else is interested in what you are saying or writing. As a researcher, you enter an existing discussion and you make a contribution to that discussion. So the journal must firstly be relevant. Together with that, one has to consider who's reading the journal and the relevance of your own work to that readership. So that might influence your choice between a local journal versus an international journal. But most importantly, I check with my professional librarian on the reputation of the journal, because one certainly wants to avoid any dodgy journal. And it's not always easy to spot them. Right, let's move over a bit to open access. So what does open access mean to you and why is it important? You know, with um, my passion of access to education, open access means that barriers to information is removed. As a staff member of the university, we have the privilege to have access to many, many journals through our library services. But for the person on the street, that information is not available without notable cost. I am in support of equal opportunities for people, and particularly in the context of our country, our continent, and the hemisphere in which we live, I believe it is important to have unrestricted access to information. Furthermore, in the time that misinformation is spreading perhaps faster than the pandemic, it does not make sense to me to keep information that's grounded in research behind paywalls. It is as bad as to ban legal tobacco products and allow illegal markets to thrive. That's what we're doing with information if we only allow people access to dodgy journals. Right. Um, and can you perhaps explain a bit uh, what do you think the benefits uh, is of open access? If you publish your work in open access journals, immediately people can read it. And then, of course, your citations go up. Um, I keep an eye every now and again on my own citations. And certainly the citations for journals that have open access um, are higher. And it's an international thing. So I I find that I get through Google Scholar notification that somebody in Turkey has cited me and somebody in Kazakhstan has cited me. And that is because it's open access. Because in, in countries in complete different regions, uh, people will not read your work unless it's open access. Mm, and that's wonderful to reach so far out uh, on the various continents. Now, perhaps a more difficult one. Often open access journals do not have an impact factor or does not appear on an accredited list. Do this influence your decision on where you will publish? Um, I have published in journals that's not listed. But... It was a special edition with a particular focus area. And once again, you have to weigh up uh, the new liberal thing of will it generate funds and will it um, increase all my stats versus will people be able to read in context um, about my work. So for me, I tried to, as a rule of thumb, Always check the accredited list. More importantly, check that it's not um, a predatory journal. For me, the impact factor is less important. I know it's not the, what I'm supposed to say, but that's just so. I hardly ever check the impact factor. Um, 
But what I do check is whether people read and publish on my topic in that journal. Because as I said before, you're entering a conversation and you are engaging with people through your publications. Um, so if, if it means that the impact factor is lower, but people in South Africa read about a South Africa, a, a typical South African issue, then for me it's less important. But the accredited list is really important in the sense that it's the only way that it generates funds for the university and it, I have to get my salary paid. So obviously that influenced my decision. I know that some of the lists are safer in terms of predatory um, journals. So I, I really check because that's the one red flag that mm. prevent me from publishing. I mean, often we also publish in conference proceedings, and then it's very focused on a particular topic. And for me, that is worth a lot. So it's a combination of things that make me decide to send a, 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 a manuscript into a particular journal. Okay, wonderful. So it's not just a once-off decision. There's various options that you weigh before you publish. Um, Absolutely. Can I ask you, what advice will you give colleagues in relation to open access publishing? First of all, if something is behind a paywall, you need to understand that people, less people are going to read your work. So if at all possible, um, support open access publishing, but... Keep an eye open because, um, as as we know, a lot of the open access journals are dodgy journals. So um, it must be a reputable open access journal and it must have reasonable fees because uh, even some of the reputable open access journals charge ridiculous high fees. And I don't think it is ethical to pay that much to get your work published. So check reputation, check the fees up front, um, check the read, readership, because you can easily see who reads the, who reads, or you should be able to easily see who reads the journals, and then keep a balance between high index journals and um, journals that's accessible um, I think the the most important thing is keep a balance. Don't publish all your work in the same journal because that means you're only engaging with the same set of readers. Um, yeah, diversify. Yeah, yeah. And the librarian is always there to assist um, and check the reputation of the journals in which you want to publish. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Right. And um, how do you see open access becoming a bigger feature uh, of the publishing landscape that um, you're re in, in your research field? Leander, um, I hope that it will become more and more um, accessible through open access. Um, because I work in the field of education and higher education, it means that there's lots of practitioners who need to read what we are doing. And the practitioner is not going to have access to it if it's if it's paid content. So if we want the school managers to read our work, if we want colleagues from other countries, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, to read our work, it's got to be accessible. And for it to be accessible, it can't be expensive. And that's my dream is that journals will become more and more open access. Yes, I agree with you totally on that. Um, Prof. Lynette, but thank you very much for your time and, and for this interview. All the best of luck with all your research and thank you for your time once again. Um, I'm Corina Walsh. I'm a professor in the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics in the School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. That's a, an interesting field. So um, within that field, what, what are your main research interests? Okay, so we've got a very nice research team and our main research interests are related to developmental origins of health and disease. 
And this relates to nutrition and associated factors during pregnancy and early life that influence long-term health and well-being. So within this area of interest, we also focus on things like food security, malnutrition, chronic diseases of lifestyle, and HIV AIDS. Sure, that's an interesting field. So it basically looks at how, where, how you start, as, in, as even when your mother is pregnant and in infancy, and now that influences your health and well-being throughout your life. Sure. Yes, and it has major implications. So it's a relatively new field, but we've just finished a study of um, over 800 women, women, pregnant women at Pelanomi Hospital and a um, hundred in the Southern Free State where we've looking at the pregnancy and then also the birth outcomes of the, the babies that are born. So we've got a number of postgraduate students working on that project and two of them are just in the final phases of finishing off their, their doctorates in that field. When you publish in this field and you said it's a relatively new field, um, where do you usually publish your research outputs? Okay, well, I always prefer to look at which journal is best suited to the topic of the paper. So that is the first consideration to make sure that it's a journal that is a relevant journal. And then if there's an open access journal in that area, that will be my first choice. So what does open, you said now open access, so what does open access mean to you? Open access is an international movement that offers free online access to publications and data sets immediately after publication. So a publication is open access when there are no financial or technical barriers to accessing it. So you can read, download, copy, share, and print those articles. It basically provides an open license for copyright. So open access makes research papers available to re readers at no cost compared to the traditional subscription model in which readers have access to articles by paying a subscription or their library that pays a subscription. So we have access to a library like the Frick Scott Library and that has access to a large number of journals uh, for which the university pays subscription fees. But if you don't have access to such a library, you often have to pay a fee before you can access a paper. So, of course, open access also gives us access to articles that our library does not subscribe to because no library can afford to subscribe to every scientific journal. Um, and now because open access doesn't charge readers, they cover the costs in other ways. So some of the income comes from publication or page fees that are paid by the authors. And I must say some of the open access journals have got quite significant page fees. That money might come from the author themselves, but often from your research grant or then from your employer. So in our faculty, we can apply to the research committees to assist with paying the page fees, and we usually um, get very good assistance from them to, 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 to pay those fees for us. Um, so, so do you feel that open access is important um, to you as a researcher? And, and if you feel it's important or an important model, why do you think it's important to you? Okay, I definitely think it's important because you've got the benefit of it speeding up research publication. Yeah. So every researcher in the world can read an article, not just those whose library can afford to subscribe to that journal in which that article appears. So if an article is available on, on an open access platform, it also helps to maximize citation of your work because it's so much more available. And I find that the open access articles are usually cited more often than articles that require subscriptions. Um, the other reason why I think it's important is that most open access journals will allow what they call self-archiving. So you can post your article to a website or a repository that's immediately also available on the internet. Um, this does depend on the journal or the publisher's policies, um, but they, they're usually quite open to you publishing on um, a repository like that. And an example of one of these is ResearchGate, which is one that I like to use. The librarians also like ResearchGate because often 
um, repositories like that can can assist the library to find articles that's that you can't get in any other way. You've you've spoken about a few things about the benefits of open access publishing, like quicker citation and then availability on on um, a repository. But are there any other benefits for you um, for publishing in open access? I think one of the most important advantages is that it increases the visibility and reuse of your papers. Yeah. So because you've got free access to scientific papers to which you don't subscribe, um, this is especially important in developing countries, you know, where our exchange rate makes it very expensive to subscribe to journals. Um, so in most of the open access journals, the publisher makes all the articles and then often the databases with the data available for free immediately on the journal website. And for me, that is the main benefit. Yes, and, and data is also becoming increasingly, you just mentioned mm -hmm. that, that, that the data set, it's becoming increasingly important to have access to that. Now, that's also something that the library is looking into and research data mm -hmm. management. You said that when you decide on a journal in which to publish, you look for um, something that fits that fits the topic of your of your um, article. Because sometimes, sometimes one of the criticism against open access journals is that they don't have an impact factor, or that they don't appear on the accredited journal list. So, does this also play a role in influencing your decision? on where to publish, the fact that sometimes an open access journal does not have these elements. Mm. It definitely does influence your choice. I uh, always make sure that the journal we choose to publish in has a good impact factor and also that it's listed on the accredited list because we depend on the funding that we get for our publications, that subsidy, to help us fund our further research. So the open access journals that we choose to publish in often have a high impact factor and they are on the accredited lists like the DHET list or so. So examples of the journals in our field are Public Library of Science or PLOS One, Biomed Central, the Indawi Publishing Corporation has got a lot of very nice journals and then Frontiers is one that we publish in quite often. We've actually this morning just heard that one of our papers has been accepted in frontiers of public health. So all of these have high impact factors and I think are seen as quality um, journals, even though they are open access. And the other thing is now there's many existing journals that's also high quality journals that, that increasingly offer um, authors the option to publish a specific article as an open access article. So, so immediately that article is then also... Um, sort of embedded in a, in a very good quality journal. So what, what advice would you give to your colleagues, especially the new academics that's, that's testing the waters for publication? So what advice would you give them in relation to open access publication? As I've mentioned, there are a number of benefits above subscription journals. Um, I find it helpful to Google the directory of open access journals. And if you Google the, that directory, you can see what journals are open access. And then you can check if they are also on the lists of journals for which you will receive subsidy. So that helps in choosing a, a good open access journal. And then other advice that I think is uh, I found very helpful is that um, even though we pay page fees to publish in most journals nowadays, you can often apply for a discount or a, ra a waiver of your page fees um, with some of the open access journals. So many of these open access journals are prepared to offer discounts to authors from, especially from developing countries. They seem to be very helpful in giving you a discount or sometimes even a waiver on the page fees. So, so do you see open access becoming a bigger feature of the publishing landscape in your field? I do. And if you compare subscription journals with open access journals, there's often no difference in the quality of the papers published in these two. So if you do have a choice, it's obvious that you'll choose the open access option. No, thank you very much for your time also this morning. Um, and all the best with your research projects and everything else that you're busy with, Karina.
So today we're speaking to Dr. Ruline van Amerwe. She started a tertiary career at the University of the Free State in 1999. She obtained degrees, the degrees BSc Agriculture in Plant Breeding and Genetics, MSc in Agriculture in Plant Breeding with Distinction and PhD in Plant Breeding. She was appointed as a research assistant at Plant Breeding from 2003 to 2009 and was later appointed to the position of lecturer in 2011. She's a member of the South African Plant Breeders Association. She also lectures two undergraduate plant breeding modules and is, and is involved in postgraduate supervision. So Dr. Van Amerwe, what are your main research interests? My research mainly focuses on the development of improved soybean varieties. Now this involves breeding for improved yield for the producer as well as improved nutritional value for the consumer. Dr. Van der how would you normally publish your research outputs? So we normally publish in accredited national and international journals. However, we also publish um, chapters in books, conference proceedings, and in local agricultural magazines, um, such as Grain SI or Oil Seeds Focus. What does open access mean to you? Access uh, means better exposure of my research and as a result, better chances of my work um, to be cited by other authors. Now, this is really um, regarded important in terms of our research um, exposure internationally. So why would you say is open access important to you? Um, Yes, like you said, um, it makes our publications more accessible to the science community and it can lead to an increase in our citations. Now, increased citations um, contribute to an increase in your age index. Now, the age index is an author level metric that measures both the productivity and citation impact of the publications of a scientist. So a high age index correlates with your success um, and will help you with, for example, being accepted for research fellowships and holding positions at um, top universities. Okay. And according to you, what are the benefits of open access publishing? Um, so it means our articles are viewed and downloaded more often than articles that are only available to subscribers and are as a result cited more often. Um, your research publications attract more attention and compared to those published um, behind the paywall. Often open access journals do not have an impact factor or does not appear on an accredited list. Does this influence your decision on where to publish? Um, of course, yes, it does influence our decision. Um, we almost never publish in journals that are not accredited or don't have an impact factor. Um, if you do, these publications won't contribute to your age index and thus your research won't make an international impact. Um, publications within such journals are not advised, even if they are open access. What advice would you give to colleagues in relation to open access publishing? Well, if possible, all researchers um, should try to publish in open access journals or books. Um, it is just a matter of cost. This type of publications can become very expensive. Last year, we um, published in that book you mentioned, and it cost us 12,000 Rand for the publication. Um, but sometimes it can cost up to 30,000 Rand. So it's really expensive. So one should take publication fees into account um, when selecting an open access journal or book. So it would then also be beneficial to have co-authors then, do you agree? Because that could also help Yes, um, we, we had co-authors that contributed to the publication. It will also help if you have a, a funding source that are willing to fund these kind of publications as well, yes. Do you see open access becoming a bigger feature of the publishing landscape in your research field? Yes, um, open access will become important in future um, as subscription fees to journals are really beca becoming very expensive. Also the price per article for online access and downloads um, are really expensive, especially with the current um, exchange rate for South African researchers. 
So um, it will open access will make your um, will make it more attractive to download um, and access these articles and then also cite them. Dr. Fenomenova, I want to thank you for your time today, and I'm wishing you all the best in your career and your publishing field.